One Piece manga chapter 930. Now I'll get straight to the point. This chapter was hype. Now there were certain things that I thought would never happen anytime soon. And I was of the mindset that these things would take place later in the arc. So that was definitely unexpected, but it was also freaking hype as well. And our boy Sanji is finally getting some redemption in this chapter, or at least I'm hoping that he does. Given Oda's antics, you never know. But I trust in Oda this time to give our boy Sanji some feats. This has been long overdue. And also for Zoro as well, while Luffy is in jail, Oda has enough time to make Zoro and Sanji grow as fighters before the final battle takes place. And I think the gradual growth and strength is something that a lot of people want to see, myself included. But let's start from the beginning. Now, Oda sidetracked Zoro for a reason, for a specific reason. What that reason is, I'm not too sure myself. But given that this is Wano, Oda has something in the works for Zoro. Zoro's vibe in this chapter was a bit different from his usual self. There's a couple of panels where we get this close-up shots of Zoro's face and it seems like he's in a state of realization whereas he's thinking deeply about something or it might just be him being spoked out by the people of Abisu town. And talking about Abisu, just like the majority of the people in Wano, these people have their ways of coping with your problems and Abisu town specifically, everyone laughs about everything which is kind of weird even though the state of their city is pretty bad as every other city but this is something that ultimately affected Zoro because he had a grin on his face during this section so I'm guessing he gained some form of respect for these people because we know Zoro for the most part the only time he ever smiles is when he goes into battle so this is something that we don't get too often with Zoro we also got more information about the witch and our boy which we all speculate to be either Denjiro or Kamawatsu again we're getting closer and closer and sooner or later he's going to be revealed and it actually makes a lot more sense for Zoro to meet one of these samurais. I would like to see some interaction between him and these guys and maybe he might learn a thing or two about swordsmanship or maybe just more things related to Wano. So this first section of the chapter was pretty enjoyable. Now the biggest shock of this chapter was Big Mom showing up to Wano. This was absolutely insane. Now I think everyone was of the mindset that sooner or later Big Mom was going to show up because not only does she have beef with Luffy but she also needs to get Zeus back from Nami. So there was enough reasons for Big Mom to show up but I didn't think it was going to be this early in the arc this was just this is just the beginning of act two so this was definitely a shocker now she only brought one sweet commander with her which was uh smoothie and then we have daifuku and Parispero as the other commanders cracker and katakuri are nowhere to be seen even though she's going to another yonko's territory so that's kind of weird now one of the more interesting things was that kaido was losing his mind for big mom not to get into wano because it was going to result in an all-out battle and also the fact that kaido Kaido wasn't ready for them. Plus, Kaido is also dealing with Wano here as well. So it's it was gonna be a war if they if these guys actually got into Wano. Then we got the reveal of King's Devil Fruit ability, who also happens to be a dragon like Drake, but his ability is that of a Pteranodon, which is very similar to a pterodactyl. Now, I was of the mindset that he was going to be a mythical based on his portrayal and him being the right hand man of Kaido. You would think the right hand man of Kaido would have a mythical as well, but it seems like he has an ancient. So it seems like there's a big theme about dragons. Uh, the, the theme about dragons is pretty strong when it comes to the higher level commanders in Kaido's crew. And even the Shogun seems to have a dragon fruit as well. So there might be more to all of them having dragon fruits. There might be a specific reason for that. And that might might tie into Kaido as well because he seemingly has the highest of these fruits. Now King comes in, stops Big Mom from getting into Wano and Big Mom drowns. We actually see her going on the water in the panel. So how is she getting out of this? Maybe Paris Sparrow or someone's gonna do something to save her because we know Big Mom's definitely not getting killed off like that. So something's gonna happen there and probably just gonna stall for certain things to happen in Wano before Big Mom actually gets in. Then we move on to page one versus Sanji. Now, first of all, I know people are going to go crazy because Sanji is using his raid suit in this fight for page one. And one thing we have to realize here is that page one isn't a scrub. And he's one of the six strongest headliners who more than likely are just under the commanders in terms of combat ability. 
Obviously, there's a gap between the headliners and the calamities, but this is a good testing ground for Sanji, and this will give us more in terms of where Sanji ranks as a fighter, because that's something that's been highly debated in the One Piece community. So it's not like Sanji needs the raid suit to defeat Page One, because he hasn't even gauged where Page One is as a fighter. You don't go full on gear fort at the beginning of a fight. That only happens when you meet a wall. So I feel like Sanji has to get used to his raid suit. Plus, we also know that he's trying to keep himself hidden. So what I think is going to happen here is that Sanji is going to be restricted to some degree using his raid suit. And this might be a mid diff fight for Sanji. I think page one is going to be used as a hype tool for Sanji's first use of his raid suit. Now, this is probably going to be him showing his powers and what his raid suit is capable of. Now, now we know the raid suits have specific abilities according to the members of the family and with sanji we know that he uses fire and maybe that fire is then amplified to be stronger and obviously after this fight sanji is going to get accustomed to the suit which makes him stronger and something i do also want to mention is that the design of his raid suit should be different because the whole thing about sanji and his family is that he was considered to be the black sheep he was different from them so i'm of the mindset that his version should be a bit different from his brothers and given that Sanji's supposed matchup in the final war or final battle is queen we have to see something from sanji before he goes into that fight again as i said before we're gonna see gradual growth with sanji and zoro before they go into the final battle and fight these calamities so i like where this is going now unfortunately we are on break next week so that sucks but the good news is that after this break we should be going back to the usual schedule of one break every three or four or so chapters and this happened because of shonen jump and over his personal breaks it's kind of messed up right now but we should be back on schedule after next week but again what do you guys think about this chapter comment down below what you guys think like the video if you liked it and subscribe for more one piece content on this channel it is pharaoh and i will see you guys later peace